Hi friends, welcome to my next video in my Low D Whistle journey. In the first video, we unpacked my brand new uh, Howard Low D Whistle. I said I wasn't going to play it between the first and second video, but I couldn't help it. Um, and I'm glad I did because I learned some things. I had seen it on the video, but it was important for me to learn in my own experience. So I think I know a little bit more to help us all out today. Today, we're just going to do two things. One, hold the whistle and, and blow in it uh, to begin making notes. And then how do we hold our fingers so that we can play? So holding the whistle, uh, my the thumb on my left hand, I find, is somewhere near that top hole. It's going to roam around a little. It's important for you to get comfortable. My right hand thumb is right, probably a smidge below that fourth hole, the, the top hole for my right hand. And so we're holding it to blow the whistle. You're just going to place the mouthpiece gently between your lips at the front of your lips. Don't stick it in far and don't hold the instrument out. You need your fingers to be able to move. Um, you don't want to put your fingers or your airway in tension, so just hold it gently in, in your mouth. And uh, no fingers right now, no fingers covering holes. Begin just learning to blow into it. If you blow too hard, it's going to sound funny. Or if your fingers are covering, covering the holes, it's going to sound really funny. So we'll learn to play harder, to blow harder later. And there's a good reason to do that. But right now, I just want to learn to play. So I'm going to blow gently. Then for notes, with my thumb kind of comfortable there, it's, uh, I want to, as a woodwind player, I want my fingertips there. Putting my fingertips there makes my hands feel uncomfortable. Do you see how my fingers aren't evenly spaced? And notice how they look like they're just going to cramp. And they will. So there's this thing that you'll read people talking about called the Piper's Grip. I think it's just because it's the grip a Piper uses. So I find, so you want to be, remember the whistles kind of facing down. My right hand, notice how the middle of my index finger is hitting the hole. And then similar on my, my uh, middle finger and then my ring fingers almost on the fingertip on my right hand. And on my left hand, it's, it's pretty similar. I am reminding myself, relax the hands, relax the hands. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play no holes and I'm gonna go top hole, second hole, third hole. We're gonna talk about what those notes are later. First. Let's just be able to play something. You notice there I'm losing the sound. It's because one of my fingers isn't properly covering the holes, which and I felt my hands getting tense. So Experiment. See where your fingers aren't seating correctly. Just play up and down and uh, skip a few notes now and then. That will be more interesting when we add the second octave, but we're not going to do that yet. Today, my goal for me and for you, if you're just starting out, is learn to just blow consistently. And you'll notice some people hold the mouthpiece off to the side. That doesn't feel quite right to me. Do what feels good to you. I think I'm actually going to go minimally off center. Just because I'm accustomed to that. Um, get accustomed to where your fingers are. Remember, loosen your hands up. Um, probably the pad of your left hand a little bit lower 
and hit some of the fleshy bits so you cover the holes. And then down here, I'm starting in the middle of my index finger. Um, and then my, my right hand's at a bit of an angle, and I'm using my fingertip to cover there. Yep, I'm missing a hole. I'm going to experiment with that. Please do the same. The next time we get together, um, I'm going to practice enough to try and get myself comfortable with this. And then we'll start talking about the notes and uh, work on the second octave. And so until then, this is Scott Shade. Happy low D whistling.